So I promised the wife today I'm only buying one car at the auction. I promise you, just the one. <laughs> Yeah, she's going to kill me. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another auction video. We are back at Aston Barclay, back at the Priest Branch to buy some more cars. Uh, been away on my holidays, I'm now back, I'm fully recharged. I'm going to get in there to try and buy a couple of bits. So, we're going to get ourselves in there now, get registered up, have a look round. Uh, those of you who are new to the channel and not watched me before, I go around the auctions trying to buy stuff and obviously vlog it uh, and show it to you guys. So, um, my stuff I buy, I buy sort of stuff between sort of a few hundred pounds to couple of grand that's my sort of bag if I'm selling cars between sort of one and three grand that's my sort of stuff I sell uh, but obviously we'll have got some other bits as well some dearer stuff and see what they do so uh, try and cover everything for everyone so we'll uh, get ourselves in there and see what is our on sale today right let's kick it off Renault again lot one um, last of the old shape the the uh, shaking your ass shape you want to call it that nice colour and champagne pan roof beautiful that's actually quite a nice thing, that colour. Mm. 65 foul, it's a good mileage on it, 1.6 petrol. I suspect that mileage, how clean it is, will have a quite bit of a impression on the price. Booking it, 6,900 quid clean even a grand even you'd say and I'd say that's clean a little bit on the bumper lacquer there but as a whole that is a nice car and people go oh these Megans with a little bit there Renault's are rubbish actually the Megan isn't that bad a car to be honest especially this shape hmm I suspect that'll do decent money because it just looks a nice thing in that colour but we'll see I might be a buyer at that at sort of the 600 quidish mark but I can't see it now there's a couple of these in today, Kia Rios, both in the same colour. This is the first one I found. This is a 1.5 diesel. Good engine, the 1.5 diesel, CRDI. Quite a robust little engine. Nice report on it, done 86, good mileage. Fortunately, it's a bit worse for wear body work wise. We've got a few scuffs here. The door's a bit of a mess. All lack of peel gone on it into door painting we've got a trim piece missing but that's not the end of the world the door painting and a piece of trim and the rest of it a little bit there as well on the light it's a bit marked up there but some of that will buff out mm. yeah it's 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 tatty in places could be rectified but the price is going to have to reflect it. If it's three or four hundred quid, I'd have a go at that. But there is a fair few hundred pounds of paint there, and he's doing on that before you even tackle the mechanical. So, a bit of caution, maybe. But I'll have a look at the other one, see what that one's like. Range Rover Sport. Done 74,000 miles, this one. Nice thing, and it's not the one that I sold the other week, just in case people were thinking, oh, it's blown up and ended up in the auction. No, it's a different one, but it's a nice thing, 74 foul, which is very low for a Range Rover Sport this year. But it's only booking at five grand, which just shows to show how much these have come down. If that had been a car with 100 foul on it, it'd probably be 38, 100 quid, 35, 100 quid at the moment. They'd say they've just come down so much, these. Lovely thing. With 74 on as well. That's probably an eight grand retail car, that. Maybe a touch more, because you just don't see him with that many low miles. It's an SE, which is a shame, because it's pretty much boggy basic. But nice as an HSE, you just get a few extra nibble, you just get a few extra bits on an HSE. Uh, not a command shift either, which is a little bit of an effect on the price. But nonetheless, a nice car. Now, here's an interesting one a Nissan. I, 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 that's, I can't remember the names of these, is it El Garand and is El Fard? There was a few of them. Basically, it's a big old imported bus. El Grand, there we go. Uh, petrol. Mm. 
no idea what be in it engine wise so it sells on the catalogue it doesn't no that's not very helpful it's gonna have a big it's gonna have a big v, v6 petrol in it i'd imagine but what a thing they're always really clean japanese imports well naturally they are because they always want to bring the best in but i don't know they're just a big old bus this isn't it it's just it'd be a nice thing to own but uh, practicality of it not too sure but it is a nice one what's this going to do not a scooby-doo they can't even book it because it's an import so it's a bit of a finger in the air job unless you sort of deal with these you ain't going to have a clue what this sort of thing is sort of worth it's, um, it's not converted in the back of it it's just it's still actually got all the seats in I think it's got eight seats I think no it hasn't it may only have has it got rear seats in the back? Yeah, it has. It only looks like it's got two big seats in the back. It's got four in the back. It's probably only a six-seater. Hmm. That's odd. Anyway, we'll see what that does, because that's interesting. Ah, what have we found? The other Kia. Now, let's see what this one's like. This is another 1.5 diesel, same colour. Again, done 86,000 miles. It's like it's his twin brother. But, we we'll have to say, the other one's probably the runt of the litter. This one's a little bit older on a 55, so you have to be a bit careful, because we're getting a bit old now. We've got to be careful about tin worm and stuff. But, bodywork wise it's a lot cleaner so far. For a 55-plate car, that's a nice one. It's got a decent report on it. I feel a little bit there, but you could probably just get away with touching that in. Interior. Clean. That's probably the one to go for, to be honest. Unless the other one's very cheap, that might be the one I'll be focusing on. Have we got an MOT on it? Have we got an MOT till November? Obviously, you'd have to put 12 months on it when you sell it, but at least it's not been thrown in just before the death of the MOT or anything like that. So it's probably just an honest part X, hopefully. We'll see what that goes through. We'll see what that does. We'll watch, watch that one go through. Now this one's not marked up, so I'm not sure if it's been withdrawn from sale or it's going through, but it was certainly on the catalogue last night. So maybe they've just not had a chance to get the stickers on it. But it was on the catalogue, so I'm assuming it's still in. Nice 07 plate Mondeo. I know from the research last night, it's a 1.8 petrol. Um, I remember I hadn't done too many miles on it. I think it's below 100 anyway. But what a nice thing. Now that's probably going to be booking at around... 800 grand. I know it's an old 07 old shape Mondeo, but it's a nice clean thing. And the mileage was half decent. If I remember right, I think it was only about 80 foul. I have to try and find it in the catalogue again, but it might not do its true potential because if I remember rightly, I think it had, there you go, a little bit of damage here on this corner, which might put a lot of people off. Now that's fixable, to be honest. A few hundred pounds, put that right. I'm hoping that will deter some people and bring it down a bit because at that sort of level, it's sort of five or six hundred quid which is what potentially that might go for with that damage that's worth buying because that's the sort of thing at the moment that's selling it looks like a 1695 car to me all day long maybe even a touch more maybe even 1895 because it's a nice example uh, honest car um, and it's one to watch so we'll see what that goes through hopefully it's still going through hopefully it hasn't been withdrawn we'll see it is a nice car an interesting one Saab 93 um, probably not something I'm going to buy, to be honest, on a 60 plate. It's, it's got done 147 fouls, a 1.9 diesel. It's booking at about 14, 1,600 quid, somewhere around there. But it's not something I'm after at the moment. And I'm not a great lover of that diesel engine, to be honest with you. Now, if it was price reflective and it was cheapy, I'd probably buy it. But it doesn't just change the fact that this Saab 93 was a lovely car. I just love Saabs. They just were just superb cars. And really missed, I feel, as well. This is a lovely one, nice aero. Always have decent interiors in them. I mean, basically, all they've done is just took a Vauxhall platform and just radically changed it. They're just so good at doing that. I mean, making cars out of nothing. And just so much better than the GM rivals. I mean, they started off with like 9,000s and changing Cavaliers into, into sort of, into cars actually people would want. And just sort of kicked off from there, really. And it's, um, it's just a real shame what Saab aren't about anymore. But that is a lovely, clean thing. And I'm going to see what that does because for someone 
as a smoker, it means to me like a car escapes for me, you know, A to B, blast around in, bit of flash for a little cash, 1500 quid level. I think that's a nice car to be driving around in, and still a looks a modern thing. BMW 4 Series. This would be a grand coupe, I imagine. Um, I'm a like, I do like the 4 Series, because it just, it's a bit different to the average BM. I sort of have to daily port with back and two to MOT stations and testing and stuff, but 114 valves, that's his diesel. It's got a couple of markers down it for vehicle operation and dashboard, so I suspect there's something going on with this. Maybe the reason why it's here. Um, it's a car buying group car, so someone's obviously chucked it into like a wee buying car firm. It's, that's who they are. It's had some paint here, definitely, and it's a bad repair. You can still see all the and you can quite make it out, you might not do the light's pretty bad, but you can just see with the sandpaper marks where it's not been painted properly or repaired properly, should we say. It's a scruffy car, X Drive 420D. God, no imagination, don't buy a 420D, get the 3 litre diesel, do it properly. It's a scruffy car, you can make it a car again, but there's a lot of a lot of uh, caution with this. There's a few markers on this that just aren't right to me. And something that I'd be a bit wary of in the end, repair bumper there. I mean, do think that's not much to sort out, but trust me guys, getting a bumper for that and then paint and stuff, it's uh, right next to the washer jet as well. There'll be, there'll be problems with this. Wheels aren't great either. We'll see what it does. I mean, it's booking at 8 to 10 grand. Now, it's certainly not clean, it's below average, so I'd say it's going to struggle to do 8.6 which is what it's below guide is maybe I'm wrong maybe someone will throw a thousand quid at it make it nice again I mean it probably would need that sort of money for an addict to get it right but not something I'm going to buy not my sort of tackle but it's nice to see a 4 series in and we'll see what it does and we'll see if the numbers stack up for it at that level of low, below book there's potential in it for someone who's brave enough to have a go because retail on that probably we like 12 13 grand maybe even yeah 13 grand which were 12 or 95 it's gagging at and we have seen them at you know comparing them because the mileage killing it a little bit to be fair 114 but yeah we'll see it's had an hard life that four series outside what we found astra and this is the sort of thing i'm after at the moment but after a Astra H, just a five door one for a while. One six petrol, and here we have one, guys, in black, 57 plate. Lot 152, it's a design model, so we've got a little bit of a half lever job going on in there. 90,000 miles. Want a window to cover. See, that Asher's not booking a great deal. And with the tailgates bumped in as well. <sighs> that could be a cheap car. It's definitely one I'm going to keep hold on because getting the tailgate in black is not going to be difficult. Fiat Panda. I saw this last night on the list as well. Lot 154. In black. It's about 135, which is a little bit high for a Panda. But it's probably still going to be a cheap car. Even on an 09. Give some idea. It's only booking it sort of three to five hundred quid. And I'll be a buyer at that sort of level. In fact, I'd pay a bit more for that, to be honest. Mm. It's pretty straight, to be fair. For the car, it's 133. 1-1 one, one petrol, decent report on it. Just got to be careful with these, make sure the steering's all right on them, because they do suffer with steering column faults, motors go on them, which can be a few hundred quid to put right. It's a shame it's 133. You want it with 100 valve on it, 110 maybe for a retail pitch, just to be keep it on the right side of things, especially the cheaper end of the market. So 130 is a bit of a letdown, but on its own nine plate and it's a clean thing, 
I know people mock fits and say, oh, fix again tomorrow and all that. Yeah, whatever. But I don't have much problems with them. Other than, I said, the odd thing, like, say, with the steering columns on puntos and stuff, which is what this is. This is just an old Mark II punto, basically. They're not bad cars. Um, and I wouldn't have any problem retailing that out the door. Even with 135 on it. But it's obviously got to be applied, it's got to reflect. Because I think that's, even this market, small, cheap car, I think that's 1695 that car. All day long. Maybe even a touch more, maybe. We'll see what that does. I'm a buyer of that one today. Now look at this. What a blast from the past. A Vauxhall Vectra. And this felt sounds odd when you say blast in the past, because we were only selling these probably three or four years ago. We stopped selling these really, so I've seen them about. Maybe a bit longer than that, maybe four or five years ago. But this is a 1.6 petrol club model, so it's 74,000 miles, and it's got one former keeper. A little bit of damage on that wing, but what a nice thing. I saw it online on the catalogue last night. I know it's got an ABS light on, because it, well, it certainly had in the picture. So we'll see what it does when it goes through. I mean, not sort of like this phase is moving ABS light on. It's, uh, you know, pretty simplistic stuff. Did like the Vectra. Obviously replaced the Cavalier, which I also thought rated as a car. Oh, simplistic interior. They're quite sturdy things inside, interior-wise, on these. They were quite, you know, well-built. Took a bit of a punishment. Sport sold loads of extras. Not many 1.6 petrols though. Most of them the 1.8 I used to buy and sell with the odd 2 litre thrown in and occasionally I get a V6 one which always used to fly out the door. Everyone wanted them. Bump was a little bit tatty. A couple of bits could just do with painting on this just to make it a proper pristine thing. But what a nice car. And something actually really is future classic written all over it if you can keep that in half decent shape. I mean it's not, we've not got a guide price on it, it's just a bit what you'd think. But, I mean, for a few hundred pounds, I'd definitely be a buyer of that. What to do with it, though? Hmm. Anyway, we'll worry about that if we win it. Oh, Volvo. Beautiful. V40, 1.8 petrol. You can just tell this has been an old man's car. An old boy's had this. Out there, got the A badge on the front. Been a member for years, you just know it. 69 foul, low mileage for a Volvo. We've got leather in there, bit of hide, beautiful. Five speed manual, bit of wood as well. It's just a proper old boy's car, that tow bar as well. Oh, he's been, he's had a little trailer, he's gone the tip with it, he's had it for years, and then he's finally one day gave up driving and shoved it in the auction. So you'd like to think. That's the story I'm going with anyway. What's it worth? Five, eight hundred quid, somewhere probably like that, for a clean thing like that. It's probably a 15, 16, 95 car to the right person retailing it out. But you can't go wrong with an old Volvo, guys. And we all end up in a Volvo eventually. Big old Sprinter van. Now, looks apart this, 70 plate. But we've done 54 foul, which is, you know, we've for 70 plates, maybe quite a lot, but no, we're not for a van. Um, slight mark on the interior, but other than that, it looks all right. But there's a slight problem with this van. It's had a little bit of an accident. Um, big old accident. In fact, it goes as far as to say, if it wasn't any older, that's a right off. Um, it's probably savable. Well, it is savable, you need jigging, uh, but that is a fair old shunt. It's not down on the HPI, so it's obviously unrecorded, it's probably why it's been thrown in here. But that goes to show, guys, stuff like that can be bought, fixed up, put back up for sale. Um, so you get like the vehicle score check we talked about the other week, and there's car verticals as well, companies like that who do those checks. This sort of stuff can uh, fall foul of uh, down standard HPI checks, but uh, we'll see what that does anyway, lot 60. Obviously, no, I'm not a big buyer of vans, but it'll be interesting to see what a uh, very badly damaged Sprinter does. <laughs> Another blast from the past, MGTF on an 09, which means this is a late MGTF, as in a after the fall of MG Rover. So this is off the Chinese guys who bought it, MG Motor UK. 
basically they just needed to get something into production. So they started re remaking MGTF convertibles. Um, nothing really changed from the old outgoing model in 2005. Don't like the grill, the gold belt on the grill, I think that's naff. Bumper's a bit messy. As the TF goes, look, they were in the 90s and they come out, they were the thing. But really, if you compare it to an MX-5 at the time, the MX-5 is probably a better driving car. But no, they have a bit of a soft spot, people liked them. And I'm an MG man, I'm a Rover man, so I'm not going to start slating them too much. I mean, they were mid-engined, you know, whoa, like a, like a supercar. And that was about as far as it went. Engines, well, we all know about road case engines and problems they have, but, you know, that's a shame, that's had a bit of a filler repair there and it's all come away. They were quick. This is a 135, so it's a variable valve one, but it's the baby one free, uh, the baby variable valve engine. They did make 140 and 160 brake versions of these as well. But uh, we'll see what it does, just have interest, but it's not something I'm going to be buying, certainly. I'm not a sports car man. Not this, not this sort of thing, anyway. Lay on. One man diesel, 136. Hmm. A little bit there as well. Hmm. Booking a lot. 600 quid is mark, six to eight hundred quid. Well worth that sort of money. Love we'll a go. Chevy Cruze, which is basically a Vox Lastra, Astra J based on. Um, Chevy Lay basically day they rebranded them when day went bust in the early 2000s, a GM product. Uh, the Cruze, like I said, is just like an Astra. I quite like them. They did quite a few of these uh, Chevys in different ver versions. They did the Orlando as well, it was like the Safira. Quite popular because they're just basic. And then what they do is basically raid the parts bit of Vauxhall products, use all the old stuff, a bit like Renault do with Dacia, um, and just use all the old reliable stuff. So, consequently, they're not usually that bad. They're always usually very simplistic, sort of like five speed old fashioned manual boxes, the reliable one. Like I said, this one again, look, five speed manual, clean inside, just use, say, use all the old reliable bits, make it cheap. And, you know, what can go wrong, really? Chevrolet, unfortunately, don't sell in the UK anymore. They pulled out in about 2013, 14. Um, but it's just a Vauxhall, so... And it's cheap. It's only booking at about 1,500 quid on a 12 plate. That's a lot of car for that. And it might even be a slightly under that. But I'd certainly be in at that sort of level. 12, 1,500 quid. That's a 2995 car all day long. And mileage isn't horrendous. It's 110. Which is a shame. But it's a 1.8. I'm overlooking that maybe. A 1.8 is probably not the ideal list of engines to be having in this. You really wanted the 1.6 to be honest. It's a bit overkill a 1.8 for which essentially is a family car and it's going to have a deer tax bracket. But we'll see. We'll see what it does. Now look at this old bus. The Kia Magentis. Ooh. God, I used to hate these. Um, no wrong with them per se. It's a big old bus. Two litre petrol. Is it an auto? Most of them are autos. Yeah, it's about there. The old state shift. Proper old boys car. You know the type who owns a big Magentis. This is a clean one, really. It's a little bit good. That's a shame. But on the whole, clean old bus. Is this something that I'm going to buy? No. I used to loathe these coming in. Not because like I said anything wrong with them, because they drive perfectly fine. But when I used to have my auction, occasionally you get something like this coming in, or a big Hyundai, I can't remember the name of it, Sinatra or Sa I can't remember, they used to have a big saloon as well, the Hyundai. Um, I can't remember the name of it now, but the, the, your dealers would take these in, and they'd just like give stupid money for them, thinking that they were the popular cars that they would resell on in auctions, and they just don't. I mean, this is booking at a couple hundred quid, and to be honest with you, 
it's probably worth two or three hundred quid because it's just not a popular thing. Although it's a nice car, so you've done 90,000 miles, and it's an auto. I mean, fair enough, maybe being an auto at the moment, it might be a bit more than that because autos are in high demand and anyone who needs an auto will drive anything at the moment because there's just nothing about. So maybe I'm being a bit unfair at 200 quid, but it's not going to do a lot. Well, you don't think it will. We'll see, we'll watch it go through, see so it does. Maybe I'll eat my hat. I had a bit of paint on that wing. I mean, the pair the most brilliantly. I mean, it matches, but it's a bit pitted and a bit uh, orange peely. Yeah, that is a big old boat. Very bright Corsa. Got a market on engine operation. So to be careful. Probably a chain on these usually. Clean car though. Done 79 foul. It's only booking at 1500 quid on a 13. Looks value. I'll turn the beard out of that sort of money, but I suspect it'll do a bit more than that. A bit more there, but... Hmm. Nice bright Corsa. Right, okay, so we've got a uh, catalogue. We've got the breakfast voucher sorted, so we're ready. Uh, we've had a quick look round. A couple of bits today I'm after. Um, there's a few bits that I've earmarked for a maybe. Not too fussy with win them, to be honest with you. Um, but then there's a few bits that I definitely want. The Astra, Black Astra with the tailgate, ding ding. I think that could be a cheap car. Exactly what I'm after. I'm after an Astra H. I've been trying to buy one for about a month and a half now. And usually I get inundated with these things. Can't buy one for love of the money because I need one. I want one for my stock. Because um, it's just easy things to sell. A good thing to have. I like them. One six petrol, the one I want. So we'll try and buy that today because I think that'll be, we can make that a half decent car. Doesn't phase me that tailgate. Get a tailgate in colour for it. It's black. It's not exactly a difficult colour to find. So yeah, we'll definitely have a go at that. We'll have a go at our little Fiat Panda as well, which is not far behind it. Um, we might give some half decent money for that because I think that's going to be an half decent car by the looks of it. Uh, and it'll sell pretty straightforward. That place will sell. I'll always sell a Panda, no problem. Obviously, we'll follow everything else in that we've looked at as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that 4 Series does. Very tatty, but we'll see what it does. They say we've got that uh, big old Nissan bus at the beginning as well. There's a few interesting bits in today, so we'll cover everything that we've looked at now, see what they do, uh, and uh, see where we go from there. There's other stuff I've not even looked at, guys, as well, so there'll be bound to be other things that we're going to see that coming through that will just take my eye, or we'll just be a surprise price that'll start off at. You know, you'll look at a car and you think it's two grand buck and not even sort of looked at, and all of a sudden it starts at 800 quid for some reason because you've just you don't have time to get around 150, 60 cars in half an hour, especially when you're doing this. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. So we'll get ourselves in position. Uh, quite like the guy who's on the auction today. Very speedy, very quick. Doesn't mess about. So uh, it should be a pretty straightforward sale. So it should flow really nice today. Hopefully we can get some uh, good footage as well, the bidding. Uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, let's get ourselves in there and see if we can try and win some vehicles. <laughs> Thank you. 
the other Kia, the better one, the real. Quick go at it. No noisy steering. We've got a clutch. Yes. Clutch is decent. We got any smoke? No. Clutch the beach. Let's see if we can win it. But the El Rado starting up, or the sorry, the El Grand is starting up. The big bus is coming, guys. The big bus is coming. Place your bets. What's it going to do? Grande, right. These are interesting. Interesting here. These are names on the clock. It's two hours six eighteen. That's three pounds in the office. You've got a green thing on the clock. A different this. Yeah, a different. The door on the phone. wins early doors as well which uh, I'm a bit surprised about uh, the Mondeo which I'm really chuffed with it was actually a cheap car really really nice example of that car uh, asked the guy when it came in and clutch was alright he said it seemed pretty alright um, guy I trust as well that driver he used a spot on so uh, we'll take his word for him it's not the end of the world if he needed a clutch but uh, you know one less job if it needed it to uh, want a bit of paint obviously but I'm not a phase about that a couple hundred quid Probably even maybe slightly less, but a couple hundred quid definitely would sort that car out, get it all bon spot on again. Uh, definitely a 16, 70, 95 car with that mileage on it, nice, nice thing. So pleased with that. And we've got the uh, the Kia Real, the, the good one, the one, better one of the two. The other one was very cheap, come from 250 quid or 275 quid. Uh, a friend of mine bought that, he'll do well with that. Um, it'll sell that straight away, no, no doubt, cheap run about for someone. But for me, the other one was the one I wanted, really, of the two. A bit older, but a nicer thing. So I've got the Astra still to come, I want to buy that, an idea, the Panda. Um, we've got a little bit more space this week. Uh, we've got a bit more space. I can throw some bits in. We've got stuff backing up because I've got the uh, saving things up and trying to get stuff ready for the new pitch that's coming in at six, seven weeks' time. So, uh, yeah, I'm just sort of mulling between stuff. Between So, at the moment, I'm just sort of keeping cars back for my pitch and other stuff that's what's trading on, quick stuff or stuff I can sell straight away. Obviously, we're supposed to pretty much straight away. So, uh, a bit of an odd time at the moment. 
comfortable with the space. It's a, a luxury, so we have to be very careful about what we're picking. But so far, I'd say stuff today has been generally okay. It's been all right. But we'll talk more about that later. Let's get ourselves in there and see if we can try and win those other two bits. The Vectra's coming in. I've bought enough today, really, and I've, with what I need to get as well. I need to get a couple more. But this Vectra's coming in, which I want. And this is Mondeo as well, which is also looking cheap. Could end up in a position here where I'm in too many cars. Not bad really for 96 fouls. Bad boy Shabby's here. Chevy Cruze is coming in next. Interesting to see what that does. Let a quick look round it. Stinks of oil. Like it's got a rock cover gasket leaking or something, probably. Very common on that 1.8. Um, blowing exhaust, manifold. Sorry, not manifold, the uh, flex pipe. Dead common on Astras. Um, stuff like that. Vauxhall, flex pipe's always going. But um, mm, a couple of wind mirrors want paint. But we'll see what it does. It's a 1.8, that's just putting me off a little bit. If it was a 1.6, I'd be all over it. Or 1.8, it's going to have to be on the cheaper end for me to get. Put my hand up. We'll see what it does. You never know. And it is, seems to be everything seems to be cheap today. So we might get a bargain. Let's we'll see what it does. Why not? 
This gem, an old Jagex type, 2.5 V6 Sovereign, auto from 37,000 miles. What a peach. Now we'll see what that does, because that's going to do a few rounds. It's got a, that mileage on it. 
I mean, I know it's petrol, but really, I mean, does it really matter? Do you want a diesel one of these? I wouldn't. Pretty sure they were all four wheel drive, the two fives and the three litres. What a clean thing that is. That is a real nice example. Auto as well. Leather, obviously sovereign, so you've got top spec. Bonnie, Bonnie car. It's beautiful, isn't it? 30 off foul as well. Uh, that was a Jaguar, well. it's quite pretty in the flesh. It's a number one four road, I'm pretty seven thousand miles. It's between yards, but I'm not going to. Service every 20 yards. I can see. Interesting. Yeah, but that's classic material, that. Yeah, he's blimey now, he's getting there. Nice thing, that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all right, mate. Yeah, yeah, no, right, let's get out of here. Do a recap of the day. Uh, talk about the winnings as well, because we've won a few. I'll see you all in a few seconds. Okay, so the auction is done. How many cars did we win today? We won four in total. Uh, we'll go through them quickly now. Uh, the four we won was the blue Kia uh, Rio, actually in that car now. Uh, we've also won the Ford Mondeo. We also won the Chevrolet as well, the Chevrolet Cruze. And we won the Astra as well towards the end. Uh, quickly touching on a few of them cars, so the Kia Rio, I'm in that now actually, without giving the game away. Actually drives really, really nice, really pleased with this. A little 1.5 diesel, absolutely spot on. Even had a bit of diesel as well, some chuffed about. Um, nice thing so far, obviously I've not been underneath it or anything like that. If I get a chance I might do a video on this one, who knows. But it was a very, very clean car. The first one looked cheap as well, that was good value, but it was a bit tatty in places. To be honest with you, that was really what it's selling as it was, it was just a cheapy, something just to flip out maybe, I might have just traded that on to someone else, I won that. Uh, a friend of mine won that anyway, he was bidding on it, uh, I think I did have a bid on it, but then when I saw him come back in and bid again, I just left him to it, because really I wanted this one, and I got this one, I was quite happy with that. Paid a little bit more than I wanted to, really it came in at 550 plus fees, so fee ban goes up quite a bit there, so it's going to be about 700 quidish mark out the door, uh, but I'm happy with that. I think it's going to be 1595 all day. It's a really clean, smart car. Uh, and so far, it seems to be driving well. I've only done 86,000 miles for 1.5 diesel. I'm really pleased with it. The Warsaw won the Mondeo. That's another one I'm really chuffed with. Did not expect to get that Mondeo for less under 500 quid. I was prepared to go slightly over. Um, so I was getting it at 450, really chuffed. That's not going to cost a great deal of money out the door. Um, uh, nice thing, 79,000 miles, lovely colour. It's just that corner, that, uh, that near side front wing and the bottom of the bumper there. Easy repairable. I'll get that fixed for not a lot of money. Um, you know, less than 150 quid uh, as well. It might just get touched a few little tiny bits. But the rest of the car, really, I mean, it's, it's very good condition. Uh, I haven't driven it properly yet. I have driven it out of the auction. Did drive reasonably all right from what I drove so far of it. Um, so I'm quite chuffed with that. If he's got blown exhaust, you maybe little bits like that, but nothing really major. Uh, he certainly st started up on the button, and uh, the engine sounded sweet. So I'm pleased with that car. Again, that, I've took that straight to paint. That's it now at the paint shop. Now I've had that out, gone to the paint shop. Uh, my guy's going to get on with that hopefully soon. Uh, and then when we get that back, we'll be able to get underneath it and do a proper uh, check over on it and look to retail that car. With 79,000 miles on a nice Mondeo, Mondeo edge like that, I know I think, that, again, it's probably going to another 1695 car. Maybe touch more, who knows? We'll go through it properly, see, and hopefully do a video on it when we get it back from paint. We then moved on to something slightly different the Chevrolet Cruze. Um, I'm not too fussed I had or hadn't bought that car. I bought it now. Look, I stand by the bid, I, I bought it. Probably they could go back and might not have bought it. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's actually a really clean thing. I've got the car out, it seems all right to be fair. Although it does smell a bit oily, I think the rock cover gasket's leaking, very common um, on the, those Foxhall engines, basically what's in them. Uh, I noticed it when it was coming through, it smelled a bit oily through for the vents. But that's easy fixable, that's not to worry about. I mean, the rock cover gasket is not particularly uh, much to worry about. It's a 1.8, which is a bit of a shame, I prefer it was a bit of a 1.6, but 
it looks a nice thing they look a lot of car you know they are basically an astra j um that's basically it with a bit more simplistic it's a nice thing i mean at 1100 quid i think it was 1100 1150 i can't exactly remember we paid for it i think it was 11. um it's cheap car really um it's probably 26 27.95 retail on it said was 2995 had a quick look on auto trader there's a few floating around around there um but you're also looking at 16s as well sort of around that money and i don't see any reason why someone would necessarily want the 18 over the 16 it's not exactly like it's a lot more powerful or quick or anything like that it's a little bit more powerful but it uses a bit more fuel and it's got a bit of deer attack so it's gonna be one of those cars i mean it might sell straight away you know you never know um, but it's been one of those cars it's got to be priced accordingly you know it's a compromised car maybe for someone uh, but i think it will sell it's definitely different it looks a nice thing it's quite fresh it doesn't mean really much doing to it other than the wing mirrors sort of painting fix the rock cover gasket obviously anything else underneath it you know if it comes in at sort of 1500 quid mark we've got a grand in it even if you sell it at 24.95 so there's margin in that car i'm happy with it but nonetheless i am happy with the car but i wouldn't be fussed if i hadn't bought that one and finally we won the Vauxhall Astra uh, I've been after Astra H for a while now I used to buy these all the time I used to get offered them all the time I never struggled to have Astras in stock can't get any at the moment don't know why um you know I mean they're a good car I mean people slate Vauxhalls but Astra H isn't a bad car very cheap to fix I know everything that goes wrong with them and you can fix them pretty quickly um this one's got a, a damaged tailgate i've already sourced a tailgate for it i know where there's one going and get that painted it's cheaper for me to get a pet tailgate and actually get it painted than it is to try and find a second hand one because i can't be bothered driving halfway across the northwest of england to go get some tailgate on ebay messing about with someone who's not there or the turn or it's not it's not they don't know where it is when you get to a breakers yard they don't know what you're talking about when you get it it's got marks on it or the boot switch have been missing i, I can't be asked for all that crap i know where's one already in a scrap yard the boot lid's mint it doesn't matter because really, you're going to paint it i'm going to get it get a lab paint it done dusted um so basically i'm happy with that Vauxhall. again we got it for 500 quid a tiny bit more than what i pay for it I, I was hoping to get it around the four ish mark but 500 quid it'll do i don't mind that engine light is on we've got maybe, maybe address that um to be honest with you on them usually one of two things is the most common sometimes it's up with coal pack problems that um you usually spot that because they miss firing that's dead easy to fix um lambda sensors are quite common on the one six is the astras usually bank one sensor two dead common again you can fix them for not a lot of money you can pick a lambda sensor up lancer you can pick a lambda sensor up for one of those for about 30 50 quid depending on what quality you want the other thing that can go wrong with them is the sort of camshaft phaser pulleys they can sometimes get a bit knocky um there is ways to sort of quiet them down a little bit uh, but to be honest with you by sounds of that one when it first started up i did listen to it it went through didn't catch it on film but i did listen to it when it started up it did sound a little bit sort of uh cammy when it first started and settled down so it probably is that i've not scanned it yet i've not done anything to it we will do a video on that we'll get the old mighty top don fired up and we do go that we can actually diagnose that properly with the machine and see what's going on with it i suspect we'll be able to find the fault of it uh, if he needs that it's not the end of the world it's, it's common to, common thing it goes wrong on him it can easily be fixed and we can sort it out no problem it's a couple hundred pounds we'll get it right i mean i'm happy to spend a bit of money on that car i mean it doesn't matter to me that car ends up costing three or four hundred quid with a bit of paint get it through the you know get it get it prepped get it through it, it doesn't bother me because it's a nice old thing it had decent mileage as well it was on the right side of the mileage you've know, done 80 90 foul i think it had bodywork was all well bodywork was pretty clean on it so no issues there and you'll easily get 17.95 for that at the moment a clean astro H will sell all day long so overall what i've got i am quite happy with we could have bought more to be fair but i really did have to rein it in at four cars i said at the beginning of the video i didn't really supposed to buy i wasn't supposed to be buying any cars at the moment other than just what the odd one i promised the wife i'd only buy one but yeah that didn't quite work out but um yeah it, it sometimes with the cheap guy you've got to buy him um i've got other stuff around me i'm sort of at the moment in this weird position where i'm trying to keep stuff sort of mothballed i call it where i'm sort of parking stuff up leaving stuff sort of you know, trying to get stuff prepped if you like going to paint or getting stuff fixed and stuff like that in anticipation obviously of the pitch and opening up uh, and then obviously my stock's changing all the time because then obviously I'm buying some more stuff and I think well maybe I'll sell that one now actually I, I won't keep that for another month no a couple of months I'll sell that one now and I'll replace it with this one we'll put this one on the pitch so I'm just sort of moving stuff around and playing with stuff at the moment uh, so what I've got at the moment might not be the same cars that go on the pitch in seven weeks time it, it, we're having to sort of move stuff and sell stuff on because we're obviously running out of space and obviously trading that's what we've got to be doing and obviously there's also cars sometimes that I buy don't get featured on the channel because we obviously trade stuff on or sometimes we don't get the chance to film them all so we did see some rather interesting stuff today uh, let me know your comments on what you've seen did you think i missed out on anything was there anything there that you were, would have bought let me know your thoughts on what you've seen at the auction today uh, i'd like to thank aston barkley as well 
for uh, putting up with me uh, and uh, just being all just being all around great as usual. Auctioneers were superb today, and to all the staff in general, particularly Aston Barker Group itself, for allowing us to be able to do and bring you this content. So make sure you check out my other videos guys, we are going on the road soon, we're going to go to some more auction houses, we're going to go to another Aston Barclay and we are also off to somewhere else as well uh, for a little bit of a special episode as well there this month, so check out those videos when they land, obviously we've got other videos landing every week, all sorts of purchase videos, so check that out and I've also got some new content coming in the next few weeks as well, so there's a bit of an action packed June coming, so make sure you check out those videos as they land, thank you for watching guys, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Click that subscribe button and that bell button as well. It really helps me out. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next video.